Welcome to the Napier People and Places Committee of July the 26th, 2022. Would you all please stand for our opening karakia? Thank you. Um, I have three apologies. Oh, just a message that this meeting is being recorded and live streamed on Council's Facebook page. I have three apologies this morning, one from Councillor Bogue, Councillor Brown and Councillor Crystal. Can I have a mover and seconder? Councillor Crown. And Councillor... I'll speak. And Mayor Wise. Sorry. Of interruption there. Um, are there any conflicts of interest today? We have no public forum. Announcements by the Mayor? Uh, yes, just to advise that we have made the finals of the World Cup of New Zealand cities. Oh, Voting kicked off at 7am this morning and we're up against our East Coast neighbours, Gisborne. So uh, when I was chatting to Toberon today, FM, after 45 minutes, Gisborne was leading with the way with 74% of the vote. So come on, people, let's mobilise. We've got until 7am on Friday morning and let's take out this title. Thank you. There are no announcements by the chairperson. Are there any notification of minor matters not on the agenda? Okay, announcements by management. Um, Natasha Mackey. Or Michelle, is it Michelle? Both, okay. Madam Chair, um, I'll just start with introducing Natasha Mackey, who's joining us remotely. Kena uh, koutou to iwi, ko Natasha Mackey toko ingawa, hea kai makahaere ahau ki te kone hira o ahiriri, ka mahi ahau me te hapuri, ki ora. Um, today's management announcement uh, update is to um, bring the council and the community um, some progress around the Napier disability strategy. So we're in implementation phase and we just wanted to take the opportunity to provide you with an update on some of the activities um, and key focus areas that we're working on. Um, before Michelle um, presents, I just wanted to um, talk about the importance uh, that we have placed on focusing on the continued high level of engagement with the disability community. So there's been quite a lot of um, emphasis at the beginning of the strategy and also through this implementation phase of involving the disability community. And we've got three groups that are helping us steer the strategy. One is the Napier Disability Advisory Group, and that's a sector group. Um, Councillor Mawson is our councillor representing the council on that group. And it's been providing advice um, and, and seeking um, implementation of disability um, issues in, into the council for over 20 years. And so that group has been instrumental in developing the strategy and now in the implementation phase. The second group is the NAPS group, that's Napier Ability Plus. And that's a group of people with disabilities or experience, a lived experience of disability. And we've now got more members on that group spanning um, across a range of disability types. And the final group that I just wanted to mention was the Napier City Council Champions Group. This is also a really important group. It's a group of staff who will ensure that the strategy is integrated into council with our, within our services, our facilities, and through our policies. So that is um, a, quite a key feature of the strategy, and it supports the, uh, the New Zealand disability strategy as well. And um, many of you will know that there's now a new ministry for disability, um, which is called Whaikaha. 
Um, so I'll just hand over to Michelle, who'll be able to take you through some of the um, key highlights that we wanted to update you with. Kia ora. Kia ora, Natasha. Tēnā koutou, kātoua, ko Michelle Greg for koinga. Um, as Natasha said, we just wanted to take you very briefly through the disability strategy and where we're at with what we're doing. Um, as you know, this is a council strategy, so it focuses very much on what council does to improve accessibility in our city across a range of the areas, which I'll talk you through now. Um, why have a strategy? Well, over a quarter of our population has a disability, 27%, and that was measured in 2013, so things are likely to have changed because we're all getting older and our population is ageing, so there's some really strong alignment between this strategy and the positive ageing strategy. Um, we have our vision, which is Napier is a city for everyone, and as Natasha mentioned, this strategy was developed alongside our disability community, and these, these were the goals and the vision that they identified that we're wanting to bring to life. So we've got the six goals and our vision there in the middle. Some highlights to date, we're just in the process of reviewing a report that's looking at our mobility parking in the city, in particular, do we have enough? Are they in the right places and are they usable? Um, we've just done a review of our website accessibility, so that's something completely different altogether, looking at um, how easy it is to navigate our website and to use different, um, different programs to do that, depending on people's accessibility needs. A range of other things up there. Um, you'll notice um, Greg Wilson there is our um, portfolio holder for disability, and that was taken a couple of years ago now for International Day of People with Disabilities. So we're starting to plan that, which is held every December. Um, we're really pleased to be seeing to see colleagues working in other parts of council who are just taking the initiative to to implement parts of the strategy. For example, the MTG, just a, a highlight for them, was um, in conducting tours of their facility using sign language interpreters, which they did you know, of their own volition. We were really pleased to have the minister at the time, um, Honourable Carmel Cipollini, visit us back in April, and just um, she had the chance to meet with members of, of the community and was hosted by Deputy Mayor Brosnan um, when she came to visit. Um, other things that we've been looking at, we've developed a communications plan for what we're doing, making sure we're telling the community more about um, progress. As Natasha mentioned, we've got our internal champions group. The photo down on the bottom left was our, our first meeting, which was when we were in lockdown earlier this year. Um, and we're also wanting to acknowledge staff across the business um, who are promoting accessibility. Um, so keep your eyes and ears peeled, because we'd love to hear about those, those activities that people are doing. So we worked with our champions group and with sector representatives to prioritise the actions in the strategy. There's quite a number in there. Um, and we assessed them against uh, um, five criteria, which you can see up there, um, each with different weightings. I'm not going to go through all of these in detail, but just to let you know that these are the highlighted um, priority actions under each of the goal areas, and I'm happy to share this presentation afterwards so that you can read that in more detail. So getting around, getting involved. Of course, this one's very topical at the moment with um, nominations open for council, and we're encouraging the sector to consider um, standing for council. Having work, we're working closely with our People and Capability Department around how we can promote council as a place to work when you, when you may have um, accessibility needs. Being safe, making sure the disability community is prepared in the, in the event of any emergency. Um, having fun, making sure everything we do actually does consider people with accessibility requirements. And lastly, being included um, and here we, we're very much going to be focusing on training for, for our staff and for managers and team leaders as well. So a snapshot of the next 12 months, we've got quite a bit on our program um, and really um, pleased to have the support of the champions and others across council to help deliver this, um, including a few things like actioning recommendations from the mobility parking review, looking at some of our bus stops in the city and making sure they are accessible for people, not just um, people who might um, be using a walker, but, but others with pushchairs. 
um, doing some remedial work around the sunken gardens in conjunction with a couple of councillors who have been advocating for that, looking at improvements to the aquatic centre that many of you know about, um, and as I said, staff training, looking at barrier-free audit training for our staff as well, and lastly, looking at funding opportunities through the Better Off Fund, which is coming up for a discussion on Thursday. So a very brief overview for you. Um, happy to take any questions at this time. Um, thanks, Michelle and Natasha. I have one question. Um, how are we going to measure success in this space in the future? Kia ora, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we are looking at, we're recording everything that we do along the way. Um, obviously, a key um, measure of success will be seeking feedback from the sector and from through our advisory groups that we have. Um, so that's more qualitative feedback. Um, and as we make improvements and roll things out, we're going to be measuring what we do in terms of mobility parking improvements. How many are we changing so that they're more accessible? You know, how, much, how many staff are attending training around awareness? Those kinds of measures. Thank you. Does anyone else have a question? Councillor Crown. Thank you, through you, Madam Chair. Um, I was wondering, for members of the community who are wanting to contribute in this space that may not be um, a part of those three key groups, what's the best way for them to be able to um, offer assistance? Kia ora through the Chair. Thanks for that question. Um, we have had some interaction with members of the new Facebook group, Accessible Nature, who are very interested in what we're doing, which is fantastic. So I, I've said to them, and, and we've said to others, that we're very open to having um, open dialogue with people around their ideas for making Napier more accessible. Happy to have the conversation with anyone. They can contact us through main council lines. Deputy Mayor Brosnan. Um, thank you. One, one of my questions, um, particularly around, I suppose, the mobility parking review, um, which has got a little bit of um, sort of national sunlight recently, is the review going into the regulatory space, so for instance, um, how much our fines are and uh, how much resourcing in terms of level of service we're putting into enforcement? Through the Chair, thanks for that question. No, this review itself is looking at demand and use of parking, mobility parking, given that we're likely to see an increased need in the future. Um, we are working with Rachel Bailey and her team around other implications, so in, in terms of enforcement. So that's a conversation that will be held with, with that team, but separate from this review, obviously informed by it, if that makes sense. Yeah, thank you, Michelle. I just wanted um, just to flag for the committee that this is a conversation that I have had with Rachel um, and is intending to bring an update to the next future Napier. Um, committee as, a, as an update on the regulatory components of that parking disability review as well. Thank you. Are there any further questions? Councillor Tuffney. Thank you and through you Madam Chair. Um, great indicators in this report, there's heaps of positives going on here and it's growing in regards to its effect and reach in our community and so you're talking about expanding and testing a couple of new ideas. And this might be a question for yourself or Councillor Price on the Regional Transport Committee, but uh, I know that um, our transport solutions are trying some innovative options in transport position, uh, provision. So is there a conversation with our um, Hawke's Bay Regional Council and GO Buses around the implications of people with disabilities using buses? So I'm just conscious that the current model they're testing uh, is about an on-demand supply and that those vehicles are not necessarily conducive to people in, um, who may have disabilities with equipment they need to haul onto a bus. Through the Chair, thank you Councillor Tuppany for your question. We've been having um, quite a few conversations with Katie Nimmin at Regional Council around the My Way on-demand bus service. Um, they currently have one bus that is accessible for people, for wheelchair users but they're looking to get more, um, and by all accounts, the trial has been quite successful and quite heavily subscribed in Hastings. Um, so um, we're, we're hopeful that that would be the case in Napier. I know that they're also reviewing bus routes, aside from that, to make sure they're more, um, 
more able to meet need than what they are at, at the moment. Thank you, Michelle. Are there any further questions? If not, thank you very much, Michelle, for your report and Natasha. It was um, a really good update for us today. Thank you. Um, we're going to move on now to the confirmation of the minutes of the Napier People and Places Committee meeting held on Thursday, the 9th of June, 2022, to be taken as a true and accurate recording of the meeting. Do I have a mover, Councillor Taylor? Seconded, Councillor Price. Any discussion? All those in favour? Aye. 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 Anyone against? That's carried. Thank you. We'll move on now to our agenda items. Um, we have agenda item one, the homelessness in Napier report. And we have Natasha Mackey and Rebecca Peterson um, here with us today um, to present this report to us. Thank you. Um, tēnā koutou katoa. Ko tai mai nei ki te kororo i ngā kaupapa o tēnei rā. Ko Bic Peterson tōku ingoa, he is Senior Policy Advisor mō te kainihira o Ahurere. Um, good morning. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. I'm Bic Peterson, Senior Policy Advisor here at Napier City Council. The purpose of this paper is to provide you with the Homelessness in Napier report and seek approval to progress the recommendations within the report. Unfortunately, Kelly Richards, the author of the report, cannot be here today due to sickness. Um, Kelly is an independent consultant who completed the Hastings District Council Homelessness Discovery Report in 2021. A bit of background and context. Um, this report contributes to the social wellbeing of our homeless whānau as stated in Section 10 of the Local Government Act and the achievement of Council's community outcomes set out in the long-term plan. Um, to set the scene, a bit of context, homelessness in Napier has increased significantly through um, lack of adequate access to permanent affordable housing. As a proxy measure, as at March 2022, we have 801 applicants on the social housing waitlist, 786 are priority A, who experience the highest housing need. This is an increase of 243 applicants since the pandemic was announced in 2020, March 2020. As at June 2021, 1,260 whānau were living in emergency housing in Napier. Um, homelessness not only refers to those visibly rough sleeping, homelessness refers to anyone without permanent shelter, staying in temporary accommodation, sharing accommodation or living in uninhabitable housing. This means all of our community members who are receiving emergency housing special needs grants, who are on the sustaining tenancies programme, who are in transitional housing. It is almost certain that we undercount those who are living with whānau and friends. On census night 2018, 530 whānau were considered severely housing deprived in Napier. 278 were without shelter. Noting there were issues with Census 2018, which meant that we did not produce reliable data due to the online collection response rates, particularly for Māori and Pacifica. You will appreciate that homelessness is caused by a range of interacting personal and structural factors, which we won't go into today. It is likely that the economic impacts of COVID-19 is increasing the risk of homelessness. Napier City Council has implemented a number of measures to address homelessness and improve community safety over the years, including partnering with services such as the outreach on Clive Square West, the development and recent launch of our Fina Tangata. A summary of these is listed in Attachment 2 of the report. The report we're presenting today is aligned with the National Aotearoa Homelessness Action Plan released in 2020 by the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development and Hastings District Council Homelessness Discovery Report completed in 2021. The report uses the term whānau paunamu when referring to people with lived experience of homelessness. The scope of the study was to understand the characteristics, needs and causes of homelessness in Napier, including a stocktake of services and supports available for those who find themselves homelessness, homeless in Napier. The research did not include the voice of those with lived experience. 
The methodology included 12 interviews, two focus groups, an online survey to 59 participants, and a faith-based hui held between December 21 and February 22. Focus groups and interviews were held with key stakeholders who deliver support services and have chance encounters with homeless whānau. Key findings included reports of up to 20 whānau sleeping rough in the CBD, numbers living in cars was estimated to be more than 40. On a daily basis, more than five whānau were accessing services at the outreach centre. Many providers recognised the need for more joined up approaches. 71% noticed an increase in demand for services including housing, financial assistance and welfare. The Outreach Centre has established relationships with Fano Kainamu. Many providers consider it a service gem. Demand for social housing continues to rise and providers agreed that emergency and transitional housing is an issue. Motels are no place for Fano to live long term. The recommendations fall under the four pillars of the Aotearoa Homelessness Action Plan to form a regional task force to develop a regional homelessness action plan, to investigate the establishment of a community hub where services can provide in-reach support for whānau Pōnamu, to form a regional place-based housing approach with Hastings District Council, to conduct research with whānau Pōnamu and their whānau to identify and inform their needs and perspectives, to bring together a provider network to identify system barriers, evidence-based models and service level challenges with the aim of developing a common system of care across the housing continuum. Um, to conclude the recommendation of the paper today, this report asks the People and Places Committee to receive the report and approve council officers to progress the recommendations or decline support for the recommendations. I'm happy to take any questions. With Thank you, Rebecca. Um, are there any questions? Councillor Price. Thank you. Um, the growth that we have, is that from local people or is it people coming into the town? Um, I suppose in response to that through the chair, um, we understand that the homeless population are transient and they do move. Um, hence one of the reasons why we are looking at taking a regional approach, with, particularly with our urban city um, in Hastings. Um, but, yeah, I, I can't comment specifically on, um, you know, where people originate from. Um, just a secondary question to that. Is our growth um, comparative with other cities? Um, through the chair, um, yes. So there's um, issues with um, emergency and transitional housing across New Zealand. Um, so it's, we're not alone. In but proportionally, are we a more popular place than other places or not? Can um, I, through the chair, can I address that? You sure can. Sorry. Um, thank you, Councillor Price, for that question. Um, we, Napier does have a high level of um, housing need, uh, so we are one of the highest provincial cities in terms of people on the social housing register, particularly that category A, uh, so we are dis disproportionately um, higher than other cities in New Zealand. In terms of rough sleeping and um, that chronic homeless end, uh, I would say that we're more on par in terms of the growth around that certainly less than uh, places such as Rotorua. Um, however, there is still uh, a high level of chronic homelessness in, in Napier. Are you able to comment on my first question then, please? Um, without, uh, through the chair, without actually um, canvassing each person um, that is currently sleeping rough, and I think that's who you're referring to potentially, um, we are unable to provide that specific data. Um, there was a time probably around 10 years ago when we did have a lot of uh, transition from between cities and particularly in the summer period. However, it seems to have leveled off in terms of um, that kind of fluctuation, but we can't comment on whether, they, whether people are coming in from out of town um, as an attractive place to to, to come and stay. Okay. Um, I just have a quick question. Um, 
with the um, moving forward with a plan um, for our region, Will we be, I mean, homelessness has been around for a long time. Um, there are a lot of people that have tried to address it. There must be some successful um, stories out there about how people have managed this um, worldwide in, in New Zealand. And while I understand we need local solutions um, for things, are there learnings that we can get from people uh, that we will be looking at from other people that have provided successful programs around this issue? Um, through the chair, um, I can declare that I'm actually currently completing a research project for my masters focusing on homelessness in Napier, and as part of that, looking at uh, four other regions in New Zealand and two international um, countries' responses. Um, yeah, and part of that will be looking at policy options for us here. Wonderful, thank you. I just didn't want us to be reinventing the wheel, Councillor McGrath. Just through the chair, um, I notice a lot of um, volunteer organisations and, and church groups involved. Will the government departments be involved with this, Kaianga Ora and MSD? Um, through the chair, um, we already have um, open dialogue with all of the government agencies um, that um, deliver across Hawke's Bay, including Napier and um, Ministry of Housing and Urban Development, who have provided quite a lot of intense support for for those regions who are actively um, have developed homelessness plans. Could, and just following up, because the, the reason I ask that is I guess um, the government organisations are charged with, with I, I guess, providing accommodation and getting people off the streets and getting them into, into better accommodation. And I'm, I'm just concerned that if we put too much emphasis into, I, I don't want to putting too much emphasis in keeping people out, of, out and away from those organisations by perhaps, for a better term, feeding the problem and not, not to some degree um, letting them take the next step into a, into a house or a home or, or, or shelter. Um, just through the chair, if I could respond to that um, comment. Uh, I think um, we are, as uh, Beck has said, we've, we're very uh, integrated with other departments and agencies. However, we're also very clear about what our role is in this space um, as council, and we're very much taking a facilitation role. So, and this is often um, how we operate within these contexts where there are other agencies that are responsible for providing services and support. So our, our role is really around facilitating better connections, developing strategies alongside uh, these agencies and others that have a high level of interest um, and responsibility in the area. So certainly this uh, idea of a regional task force developing a, an action plan is certainly not to keep people in situations of homelessness, but absolutely to progress them along the continuum of, um, of, how, of secure housing. Okay, I have a few more questions um, from councillors. So we'll start with Deputy Mayor Brosnan, then Councillor Simpson, then Councillor Tarpany. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Natasha, I think my question um, was sort of partially answered by your, your answer to Councillor McGrath, but I was looking at the recommendations in the report and specifically the supply recommendations, which was around... Um, not partnering per se with central government agencies but within the region um, and specifically naming the two obviously key ratepayer um, funded organisations ourselves and Hastings District Council. Am I reading that correctly that the recommendations around supply are not to provide but to, is it to provide advice on housing models? Is that what the recommendation around supply is? Um, through the chair, I, yes, and and really to use all instruments that council has available to it uh, to enable supply, particularly in the affordable housing um, sector. Thank you. Councillor Simpson. Yeah, through you, Madam Chair. I just want to query part B of the recommendation, approve um, the implementation of the recommendations. <coughs> I just want to confirm uh, are any costs associated with going to be able to be accommodated within our existing budgets or will we be requiring additional funding? Um, through the chair, 
very yeah. good question, yeah. Council Simpson. Um, so we will be uh, partnering with agencies that may be able to provide some funding to assist. So for example, the regional uh, plan could well be supported through uh, MHUD funding uh, at, as they have done to other regions. So we will be seeking external funding where we can. Other um, opportunities will have to come back through to council. For example, investigating the community hub um, idea may require us to do a business case feasibility study. Uh, but again, it might not necessarily be that that's council led, it, it, but we may be a contributor to that process. So. This is uh, ha we haven't got to the point where we have costed out all of the all of those recommendations, some of which will be business as usual for us. But where there is a cost, we will need to come back to council if we require additional budget. Thank you, Councillor Tapani. Um, thank you, and through you, Madam Chair, I'll preface my question, um, team. I'm just stating this isn't a criticism. I'm only seeking more clarity around how this piece of work fits into the timeline of change for Napier City and the provision of services in the space. And so, in other words, I recognise this report is a, um, is a contextual piece which helps us to identify the players and the components of the situation and the challenge ahead of us. And so, um, my question is not designed to diminish that work, but rather to seek further clarity. And here comes the question, Natasha. Um, as I read through some of this, I noticed that there, most of it was spent on um, definition problems rather than solution generation, and, and there didn't appear to be anything to address the immediate and interim um, challenges. So while I get that we need definition, and while I get we need to assess who's in this space and who can help provision, my question is around, have you got some sort of indicator on timeline, if this is one step and then we're going to move to a regional report and then that might move to something else, just um, we can't get down into detail, but if you've got some indicator on years as to the journey that might take and consequently um, what are we doing in the now and in the interim to help support within our ability, because I recognise in the report that this is a massively huge and complex problem and involves every aspect of our society and every ministry. So really it's about what we as a council can do in this space. Um, are you able to enlighten anything in that area without you know, going on too long? Because I, I, I see after reading the report, I'm gonna need to catch up with yourself and Bex around a lot of the questions that have popped up rather than this forum. So just what are we doing in the now and in the interim and that time that timeline, please? Yeah, uh, kia ora for that question um, through the chair. So uh, obviously, um, this report enables us to mirror the data and information that Hastings District Council also now holds around this issue. So the next step um, in the process is to uh, work with uh, Hastings uh, to look at and, and others to facilitate this um, opportunity to develop a, a regional plan. And that plan will have those sorts of uh, those timelines mapped out. So it's a, it's about an action plan, not another strategy. Um, and the examples around the country are, are really good uh, for us to reference when we're going about de developing that plan. In terms of in the meantime, I think um, what I would say is that we have been providing a lot of uh, support and. Um, advice where we, we, where we can around this issue to um, a number of other agencies and support services. So for example, a lot of our community funding um, is provided to services that, that provide amongst others um, services to, to this cohort as well. And the outreach service was uh, established following a response to the initial um, visibility of rough sleeping in Napier, which was facilitated by Napier City Council at the time, and then partnered with other agencies to develop that service following some research. So it's not to say that we will be waiting for the action plan um, in order to respond to the issue. Um, we certainly have been working um, for a while on this um, with others in the sector. And I think the other thing to note is that Afina Tangata is also a response in part to some of the issues that have been um, 
prevalent in the city as a result of, of homeless, chronic homelessness. So uh, I guess the answer is a little bit vague at the moment, Councillor Tuppany, but we will be providing much surer timelines once we um, start working on that action plan. Um, supplementary answer through you, Madam Chair. So those are great indicators, and I look forward to the follow-up, Natasha. Um, given that the Tangata Afina um, Kopapa is recently new to our business operations, could you give us some indicators on how that's going? Thanks. Um, I actually, through the chair, I'd, I'd prefer that um, I pass that over to the director of city strategy, if possible, um, if they have any um, high-level. Um, indicators as yet, but as you say, it is a very new service, uh, but my understanding is very positive impact so far. There's lots of eye winking and smiling in the room. Do we have someone to answer that question? No. Um, can you just repeat what the question was, sorry? Just a general indicator on how the um, assist program is running, seeing as it's new for um, council as a business as usual operation. Um, they've really made some good um, progress in the in the early stages of their formation, and um, I think um, recently uh, Rachel Horton sent councillors a bit of an update of some of the things that they were. Um, involved in in these very early days, um, but there's been some really great progress, and I think they're um, they're really um, a real a real bonus to the council's team. Thank, thank you, you Madam Mayor Wise. Uh, thank you, and through the chair, my question has um, largely been answered uh, by Natasha in response to Councillor Tarpany's question, just with regards to, in particular. Uh, Hastings District Council and the recommendations there for a regional task force and regional place-based housing approach. Um, and Natasha, I appreciate you are still formulating the actual plan, um, the action plan. But just for further clarity, because these recommendations um, are actually quite dependent on NCC and HDC um, sort of being in alignment and acting as leads uh, for this process going forward. Has there been some initial conversations with HDC and are we confident that they are keen to, to lead in partnership with us? Um, through the Chair, I'll actually get Rebecca to update um, on that, but just to say that um, the this um, discovery report was developed to ensure that we were both starting from the same place. Um, and so we, we have been working very closely with officers from the Hastings District Council and their report has been through the council as well, um, indicating that Napier was um, doing the report in order to align so that we could work together um, on that regional action plan. But um, I'll just hand over to Beck to see if she's got anything further to add to that. Um, through the chair. Um, I, I suppose just agreeing with um, Natasha in terms of the high level discussions that, that occurred before we um, started um, started this process, um, but also just to highlight that um, since the March 2020 lockdown, there has been a regional homelessness network across all of the government agencies and councils. Um, a, a, a responding to issues, particularly for our chronic rough sleepers across the two cities. So, you know, those, those the conversations and the relationships are ongoing and there is sort of more urgent and acute um, issues that we, we work with um, in collaboration with our partners. Thank you. If there are no further questions, we'll move on. and. Just for a supplementary, um, could you clarify for me the difference between those two regional entities you spoke of, Beck? So there's the one in your response just now, and then there's the one in the report which is looking to be established. What's the difference between those two? I know one's about an implementation plan, so it might be more about the application of those groups, but I'd, I'd love a little bit more understanding between the difference between those two regional, regional groups and their focus. Um, through the chair, so the regional homelessness network, um, if, you know, take us back to lockdown March 2020, and then in August 2021, 
um, there was a requirement to um, make sure that everyone was in shelter or a sheltered accommodation. Um, there's also been, you know, as we're all aware, issues around um, access to testing, you know, access to um, support services during the COVID response. So it's been very much focused on those specific issues. Um, yeah, but, but it, I suppose it um, will allow us to easily segue into um, forming this regional task force because we've got those existing relationships. Um, but we might want to think about membership and broaden that or um, tailor that accordingly. Thank you, Madam Chief. Okay, um, thank you very much, Natasha and Rebecca, for that comprehensive um, report on this paper and to the councillors for the robust discussion and questions. Um, we will now move into um, the officer's recommendation. Um, do I have a mover for the recommendation? Uh, Mayor Wise, the seconder. Councillor Crown, do you wish to speak to you, Mayor Wise? Uh, firstly, I'd like to congratulate the report writer, uh, Kelly Richards, it was an incredibly well written and informative report and also say thank you to council officers that have been involved in this much needed piece of work. Um, we are of course, as Natasha referred to earlier, um, one of the provincial areas that has the, the highest need in this space and it's really pleasing to see that we've got um, some firm recommendations in front of us which are aligned with Hastings District Council and we've had input from the many different agencies and organisations who are involved in this space. So um, I'm very much looking forward to the next step in terms of formulating the action plan and very happy to support the recommendations in front of us. Councillor Crown, do you wish to speak? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, you just following on from the Mayor, um, it's great to see a willingness across the sector in regards to um, banding together, especially to work so holistically. I think um, the different sections that they plan to um, put actions around um, supply, prevention, etc., um, is the approach that is needed. Um, like Councillor Simpson, though, um, I think you know the devil is in the detail when you're pulling together a group like this, a task force like this, um, and figuring out where resourcing is going to come from, who is going to um, put their hand in their pocket, so to speak, is something that we will certainly need to keep our eye on as things develop. But otherwise, um, yeah, a very worthy piece of work um, and, and great to see our people respected so well um, and given hopefully we can change um, the language and the way that we think of these people and refer to them as whānau pōnamu from now on. Thank you, Councillor Crown. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to the motion or against the motion? Then I'm happy to um, um, thank the two speakers this morning who presented the report again and put the motion. So all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Anyone against? It's carried. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll now move on to item two, which is the revised tasting smoke-free and vape-free post. Uh, policy on page 55, your agenda. Can we have Michelle speak to that um, report? So welcome again, Michelle. Kia ora, kia ora, Madam Chair. Um, tēnā koe, Mia Wise, tēnā koutou councillors. Um, I'm pleased to be presenting the draft smoke-free and vape-free policy for Napier and Hastings 2022 to the committee today following the review that was undertaken by a joint working group that was set up by the two councils for this purpose. And on that note, I'd like to thank Councillor Bogue, um, who chaired that working group, Youth Councillor Tom Little, who was our Deputy Chair, and Deputy Mayor Annette Brosnan, along with the Hastings District Council representatives. Um, so this paper asks you to note the review process um, that we've been working through over the past few months and the considerations that have been taken in revising the previous policy, which was from 2015, and it also asks you to adopt the revised policy. Um, just to note that Hastings District Council considered the policy at their committee meeting on the 28th of June, 
and they're proposing a small addition to include future developed council managed pedestrian laneways in addition to the already proposed pedestrian laneways that are in the policy. Um, we've worked closely obviously with Hastings District Council and the working group that was established for this purpose and um, the group's working group's recommendations in support of this policy are included in the paper for you. We received a large amount of input from the community during um, the review, including from businesses, whole order providers, and other stakeholders. We had over 700 residents and over 100 businesses um, give us good direction for revising the policy during the pre-engagement phase. And the revision has also been informed by looking at national policy direction and legislation in this space, review of local and national smoking and vaping data that we sourced, desktop research of other council policies, and observations of behaviour at playgrounds, bus stops and outdoor dining areas that are already covered by the current policy. During the process, we sought advice and guidance from the Christchurch Cancer Society, who take the lead for New Zealand in having oversight of what councils are doing across the country. And we were pleased to have them acknowledge that Napier Hastings has one of the most progressive policies in the country in terms of its coverage. So the draft policy has been revised to ensure that we use clearer t terminology around referencing vape-free and vaping. Previously, we included e-cigarette terminology in, in the policy, so we're not, vaping is not a new introduction to the policy, but it's the new terminology to cover what was already in there. We've also provided more clarity around council's responsibilities to promote count, uh, community wellbeing and our responsibilities under the Health Act to protect public health. We've um, continued the strong alignment of the policy with the national goal for a smoke-free Aotearoa New Zealand 2025, which is still very much on the government's agenda. And we've included um, council-managed pedestrian laneways in urban retail areas as an additional focus in the policy. Um, to note, also, the policy continues to take a non-punitive approach. Instead of, it's, in, instead of enforcement, it's focusing on self-regulation, as is done in all but one other council in the country. And we're going to be developing a promotional campaign to form part of the implementation plan so that there's high awareness of, of the requirements of the policy. In terms of formal feedback on it, we had 48 submissions, um, including from the local cancer society and pleasingly also from our two youth councils who are very supportive. So overall, three quarters of submitters support the policy, um, giving us good assurance that it's on the right track. So the next step, once the policy is adopted, is to work with Hastings District Council to develop a clear implementation plan and we're looking to work closely with the District Health Board and with the Hawke's Bay Smoke Free Coalition, which is a collection of health providers, um, in support of rolling it out. We'll also be considering the opportunity to make a submission to the National Smoke Free Action Plan when that's released for feedback, and we're expecting that um, it was going to be July, so it may be this week or potentially in August. So lastly, I just ask that the committee notes that Hastings District Council will next consider the policy at their council meeting on the 4th of August. And I'm happy to take any questions. Thanks, Michelle. Does anyone have any questions? Councillor Taylor. No, thanks, Michelle. Just in relation to the um, slight, slight amendment that Hastings is suggesting, we need to um, confirm that as well, seeing it's a joint policy. Through the chair, yes, that's be appropriate for them to have that part and us not. Through the chair, that's correct, and we have put that into our officer's recommendation um, C um, yeah. to ask that if the policy is adopted, then um, that includes the proposal from Hastings District Council as well. Do we have any further questions? Okay. Um, well, the officer's recommendation is there for you, A to D. Um, so I'm going to read that out. That the Napier People and Places Committee A note the review process undertaken to inform the revision of the Napier Hastings Smoke Free and Vape Free Policy. B note Hastings District Council is proposing, in addition to the laneways designated area in the policy, to include future developed council managed pedestrian laneways, which will be confirmed at their meeting on the 4th of August 2022. 
C, adopt the revised Napier Hastings Smoke Free and Vape Free policy, including in principle the proposed Hastings District Council addition to the policy in the event they adopt this on the 4th of August 2022. And D, note the implementation of the Napier Hastings Smoke Free Vape Free policy will begin on the 1st of January 2023, subject to the adoption of the policy by both Hastings District and Napier City Councils. Do I have a mover? Please. Deputy Mayor Brosnan has moved it. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Taylor, is there any further discussion? Do either of you wish to speak? Um, I'll say a couple of brief words. Uh, just in support of the process around the development of the policy, um, it was very well chaired and it was refreshing to have um, our Deputy Chair as Tom from our Youth Council on it. He brought a really interesting perspective uh, from the youth, in particular to the vaping epidemic, I think as he would put it. Um, that he's seeing amongst his peers. So I'm really proud of the, the um, resulting policy and happy to support its adoption. Thank you. Thank you. I'll put the motion. Oh, did you want to say anything, Councillor Taylor? Oh, only the fact that I'm pleased to see that it's actually covering the two cities so that people don't move between the two locations easily and have different regulations. So more, more than happy. Thank you. Thank you. I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Anyone against? That's carried. Thank you very much, Michelle. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move to item three, which is under separate cover. Um, so that's the Marine Prey Pools Future Delivery Model. And we have <coughs> Glenn coming to speak to us this morning. Hi, Glenn. Um, about the report, so I'll let you start off. Great, thank you. Uh, kia ora koutou katoa, he kaimahi o ahau ati kanihira o ahariri, uh, called Glenn Lucas Tokuma. Uh, so the paper that you have in front of us um, is about the transition for Marine Parade Pools. So Marine Parade Pools was built about 20 years ago and a management agreement was signed at the time. The management agreement is up on the 31st of January next year and the end of this agreement provides Council with an opportunity to do something a little bit different. So on the 5th of April, Council, uh, we ran a Council workshop uh, with Thrive Spaces and Places to present an assessment of the potential operating models. Uh, the Napier City Council's Aquatic Strategic Framework was used uh, as an assessment criteria to assess the potential models. So while the in-house and outsource model did have their relative strengths, uh, overall the in-house model scored more favourably across the six criteria that were assessed, uh, which sort of led us, uh, led us to believe that the best, it is the best model to deliver on Council vision and outcomes. Uh, there are a couple of additional considerations to, um, to, to factor into this. Um, the, facility is 20 years old. Uh, it's been managed by an external third party. So um, running it in-house, at least in the short to medium term, will give us the opportunity to, to better understand the condition, to add to the existing information that we do have about the facility, to understand the performance um, in terms of financial and non-financial aspects, um, and help us to um, yeah, to determine a, a, a bit more of a future um, of a future model if we do want to change that, um, and also really importantly is understanding the actual performance to better inform um, future uh, future operating models. So if we if we do want to take it to market at some stage, it's really important that we've got a, got a good understanding of the of the performance of the facility. So uh, the recommendation of the paper is that. Uh, Council approve the operations of Marine Parade Pool to be transitioned to a council-run facility from the 1st of February um, 2023. All right, thanks very much, Glenn. Do we have any questions from councillors? Councillor Tarpany. Um, thank you, and through you, Madam Chair, my question is really easy, Glenn. Um, <clears throat> this is a really great indicator, uh, and looking forward to seeing um, how we scope this quarter to out. So my question is, in the interim, with regards to our public and others continuing to use the facility, in the past we were asked to forward that information through to our customer services so that we get an accurate understanding of how that service is being delivered. Is that still standing um, if we have concerns? Because I am receiving a number. If we are receiving concerns, where would we forward those to? Okay, so um, just to clarify the question, Arpi, so I'm just going to feed that back to you to make sure I'm on the right track. So. Um, 
what you're asking is if members of the public have concerns about the service provision um, at Ocean Spa at the moment, um, where do they go to? Where do they forward those to? Is that what you're, you're a winner. asking? Okay, great. So yes, we did have a, um, a, an arrangement set up with our customer services team that anything that comes in through the normal council line um, gets copied in to me but forwarded to the um, existing provider to respond to. So that process has been underway. But um, there hasn't been a lot recently, to be perfectly honest. So um, if, if any of you are receiving comments from, from any people, then please forward them on to me. And I'm more than happy to have a chat and, and follow those up. No, yeah, Mahi. Thank you. Councillor Crown. Thank you. Uh, through the chair. Glenn, um, under the financial uh, implication section, um, noting that there is budget available in the LTP, can you give us an idea of that value and how you see it providing for um, for us to be able to take the, the service uh, in house, perhaps how long that that budget um, might last for. <laughs> okay, so um, I guess going back to the workshop um, that we had on the fifth of April, um, one of the potential value of taking this um, facility in house is the uh, operational surplus that operating the facility can provide to help to offset the costs of aquatics provision across the um, the network of the two facilities. Um, I, as we are subject to uh, management of or negotiation of, of exit of the contract at the moment, I'm a little bit restricted in terms of what can be discussed in, in public and what can be discussed in private. Um, I'm more than happy to field any questions via email. I do need to put together a bit of an update for, for councillors in terms of where we're at at the moment. Um, so that might be the best way to, um, to get that information to you. And if you've got any questions, just, um, just hit me back via email and we'll seek to, seek to fill those out for you. Right. Is there any way that you can provide us with sort of a combined value around the work that has been planned though? Um, we had a project manager start on this project about um, two weeks or so ago. Um, he's defined, he, I've helped him to define the scope of the project and we're working through each of the work stream owners to um, identify cost. At the moment, the, the costs that are in the budget um, were, uh, <laughs> shall we say, we're identifying more things as we go through the work stream. So, we're, you know, and it will be a case of actually prioritising what's important and what must be done by the 1st of February and what um, may be pushed into when we've got available budget in the next financial year. Yeah. Are there any further questions? That's great. Okay, um, so the officer's recommendation is that we approve the operations of the marine parade pools to be transitioned to a council-run facility on the 1st of February 2023. Do I have a mover for that? Councillor Crown, second to Councillor McGrath. Do you have any comments to make? Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Just quickly, um, I think um, aside from the, the way that we've assessed um, against the, the three different options around in-house outsourced or outsourced plus. I think the other thing that um, most of us are aware of in the discussion that we've had from our, and feedback from our community is that they have an expectation that we obtain control over the asset again, um, especially in the short to medium term, given some of the feedback that we've had around service um, levels and condition. So I think that it's, um, yeah, it's a really positive step, so happy to support. Thank you. Councillor McGrath. Just through the chair, um, briefly the same comments as Councillor Crown. Um, when I started on council in 2014, uh, the, the community were hitting me up then about issues they were having, and I know we've been trying to improve the place um, ever since, but it, it, it has been an ongoing issue. And um, uh, the, the, the community have, to some degree, I've got here, demanded we take it back. And uh, I know the contract's ending, and um, this will be our, our, our opportunity to uh, to do so. Any further comments? Councillor Taylor? Well, I'd just like to make the comment that I think it's definitely the right way. And I haven't seen many of you there in the last few weeks, and I've been a regular <laughs> almost every day. And um, it's great that I'm not known as a councillor when I'm down there because <laughs> I get lots of feedback. And um, I think there is already, and even yesterday, a gentleman said to me, it's going to be great next year when the council will take it back over. So um, I think that's where we've got to go. Thank you. Right, that's three speakers in favour. Do I have anyone to speak against the motion? 
Then I'm happy to put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. 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 Anyone against? And that's carried. Thanks very much um, for that, Glenn. And um, now we are going to adjourn um, the Pe People and Places Committee for the Open Prosperous yeah. Napier Committee meeting. Adjournment.